we will speak a tiny bit how to play against stronger players. You know, what is the right, what's the right attitude? You know, we had one game of Jonathan beating a player 350 points above him and in the other game, pretty much the same differences like 2250, 2300 to 2600 feet. So that's like really serious. And the game that we're going to see between woman grandmaster and st at, at some point now she's graduating from uh, graduate school, but at some point, so member of Olympic team, um, strong, decent woman grandmaster Anna Shorevit, <coughs> Anna Shorevit studying here in Lindenwood, and grandmaster Kovares actually playing for Webster. So every you know the city is swamped. How? To beat a stronger player. For example, I was speaking with someone this week. Smart kid, let's say about 2,000, a young but young one, and he was playing against a 2,300 player. And when he was, in some some moment, he avoided complications, even even at a tiny cost. I asked him, "Hey, why don't you play this?" And his reply was really 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 surprising he said well he's a master he's a stronger player than me I, I i don't want to play tactics with him so if you're playing against a higher rated player most likely either create a mess on the board and just statistically he might blunder like for example here spencer is a decent player a master he really blundered. He really blundered. I mean, the game was... Okay, he played a really bad move. Actually, after C3, he's probably lost anyway. I mean, C3 is really a big mistake and then just blundered the F7 square. But even without that, even without the blunder spot, if you, tactically, the gap, the gap between players tactically, most of the time, is less than positional understanding between a master end, 2000 or 1800 or 1900. Just the understanding, because what, what does understanding mean? Understanding means you are not, you are using different parts of your brain. You're using memory and experience, or more the experience part, as opposed to calculating. This is what we've seen in the previous game, and we're going to see this game that Anna played against. Grandmaster Corrales, and it was actually a very decent game, positional one, but she was not afraid. She's actually a very decent tactical player. She didn't stay away from any tactical thing and won the game fair and square. Like well, once you're starting to say, oh, I'm going to change, especially avoid tactics, super wrong. What you might want to say I want to avoid boring game because in a boring game, a much experienced player has a big advantage over a weaker player. So that was a huge blunder what this young kid was telling me about his game. Opposite way. All right, d4, knight f6. c4, e6. Apparently, everything goes today this way. Everything, okay. She saw your game, she said, okay, I have to play this way. C5, entering the Benoni this way or another. No, take, that would not be pretty. D5, take, take. Okay, so we are entering major line in the Benoni defense. You know, somewhat resembles our King's Indian, but just some version, you know, bishop on G7, pawn is on C5, not E5. I mean, at some point, all those openings were basically same bunch of family, put, bishop, put the bishop on g7 against d4, and either you go c5 or you go e5. Okay, castle. So what is black's really, what's black's idea in those positions? I mean, we have this position on the board, and well, we're going to ask ourselves, what does black want to do here? Yeah? He wants to play d5, and uh, bishop e7 is attacked by d5. He wants to play b5, and then? Well, he wants to expand on the queen. 
We want to expand on the queen side, right? Rook b8, b5, knight c7, a6, all and all and all and all. I agree. Well, what does white want to play? Not allow him to do that, and maybe play in the center, right? I mean, white has this pawn that can be pushed, depends when. And where would be the dream square for the knight on f3? C4, okay, excellent. Very, very basic idea. All right, h3, sometimes designed to not allow bishop g4. Because black many times would like to exchange this, because then he will get some better control of the dark squares in the center. We see sometimes ideas to exchange it, and then the knight clears the way, and black gets better control over many squares because the knight on f3 is out. So h3 against the bishop on c8. Okay, knight c7. There are some, I mean, one of the big experts in the world in this line was a Chinese player. At some point he was really top 10 and like really unbelievable, Wang Yu. He played many games with g3 systems against Benoni. And actually in this game, he's playing against maybe the biggest expert in the world in the last years. Um, actually, quite sad, uh, the super strong Grandmaster Gashimov, top 10 in the world, that is not playing right now due to some sickness, medical reasons, but extremely strong. I mean, he was 27, 50, 64. I mean, really, really strong, like top 10 in the world. And so we have one game and another big expert. I mean, I just chose a few games of absolutely top players that are playing. Tomaszewski, that made it to the semi-final of the World Cup right now against another big Benoni expert, Joe Bava. In that game, A4, sorry, in that game, A4 was played. Rook E8, Knight D2, okay, everything is normal. B6, okay, Bishop going to A6. Rook E1, okay. Those openings, all of those openings were somewhat more popular, like somewhere in the 80s. But, mm, you know, the entire idea of playing for space uh, or giving away so much space has been reduced. That's why we see today so much more Slav defenses and Queen's Gambit and just putting pawn on d5. But this is normal position. The game was a draw. Oh, actually, sorry. Next game. Next two games were a draw. This one, Tomaszewski won. Okay. In our game, another logical move was played. E4. Immediately playing in the center. We mentioned this idea. Okay. What, what, what's going to happen after B5? Yeah, I'm going to disappear, tying my shoe, coming back, maybe. If I'm not there in two minutes, come and rescue me. It would be interesting if I would do the commentary from here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Julian, E5, break in the center, right? Big time. And of course, take, take, ugh, this D6, like, don't. Yeah, just doesn't look. Maybe d6 immediately is even stronger. Right. So it means that black has to move his knight on f6. Now, uh, wh what, what would be the most logical square to move the knight? I, actually, a bit surprising the, the way that this game was, that this game turned out. <coughs> yes. d7. Playing like Gashimov, two games against Wang Yu and against Bakro. Super strong grandmasters. Very logical. We want to go this way. And now, Wang Yu played Bishop G5. Kind of interesting idea. F6, Bishop F4. Well, we want to block the bishop. So sometimes we play Bishop G5, black play F6, Knight to E5. Okay, I, I like white here, but Black's idea is maybe at some point either to go g4 or 
f5 at some point to open the bishop. It's interesting, why took, took, so this bishop is really ugly. And now it's strategically, if white can exchange the bishop, the light colored bishop, he would almost be winning strategically. Because then this knight is going to make this beautiful way, get to a 5 there will be nothing to capture him. Strategically forget about it. No, as it is, this position I quite like. I think I quite like white. The game was a draw. This was Wang Yugashimov, Baku, 2008. This bishop g5 is logical. And actually, now we know who improved on which one. Because the, ne the game, the other game that Gashimov played was Bakro Gashimov, 2007. Where bishop f4 immediately was played. But also here I like white. Here, here, here. And now, what should black play here? Yes? Very good. Very good. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, it's, like, it's, like, it's like really very good that I don't ev have even any sarcastic comment or something annoying to say. It's like, very good idea, dude. Yeah. Knights are amazing blockaders, and yeah, there, there is no better spot than to uh, stick the knight over there. Just very, very good. Classical blockade. Okay. And that's exactly how Gashimov played. That's not bad. If you're playing some moves in this opening like Gashimov, the game was actually quite a quick draw in 2007. Okay, so this is logical. I mean, I, I, white is better. I mean, this, this system with knight a6, c7, well, like I like to quote in such situation, Shania, Stwa such, well, Shania Twain, famous song, they don't impress me much. The same as this system. <laughs> no. Not impressing me much. So maybe you're playing knight f8. Don't impress me much. No, I, because I don't like the knight there. I don't. I don't know. OK. Well, I think white can play here bishop g5. I like this idea of inducing you know, the, some weaknesses after f6. So bishop g5 is possibility, bishop f4. OK, you know, Anna played a4. We cannot say a word about that. Rook b8. Oh, look at her. That's, that's a strong player. Bishop g5. So you see, we know, we know the idea. OK. She knows the idea, and I can you know, just mention it. But she played really strong. Look, look at this, at this thing. I, I like this idea a lot. Yeah, this. Not very impressive, this stuff over there. A6. What after F5? What, what will we play here after F5? Because F5 looks mm, a bit logical. There are two, two logical ways to play. Before, before to, uh, F5. Take the pawn. Yeah. Take the pawn is a start. Yes, Julian? Uh, just that, that's the second move. Very good job here. OK. Yeah, bishop g5 possible, because pretty much in any version, I'm OK exchanging those. In pretty much in any version, bishop g5. But take on f5, I, I, I would play bishop g5, but I think computer likes more e takes f5. So. But, but let's see if we 
agree on the idea. Now what to play? What idea for white? OK, great. So we took the pawn. But what now? But it wouldn't, but it, but it wouldn't be such a huge difference, right? Because you, you are not changing the pawns. If he will take, you will take back. Sure. So you will still have the same structure, more or less. Sure. But what now? I mean, when we look at such position, tactics will actually come. But right now, it is more positional, strategical. Where we want to go? What we want to do? Well, where does white want to go? I mean, especially in such position, you should say, well, where I want my pieces to be. Close your eyes. Yeah, Julian, where, where you want your pieces to be if you're white? <sighs> so you want to exchange the, OK. Something s faster, simpler, more logical. I mean, that's OK. But I, I think there is something that is like saying, oh, there you want to go. With the, uh. hmm. Yes, exactly that. So where is that? G4. G4. OK, I go back with the bishop. But now, after you play g4, you know, dude, it's not at, at any cost, any time. And okay, now you weaken tiny bit there, four square. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm okay. Like, you tiny bit weaken some light, some dark squares over there. But for anyone that plays King's Indian in any of those positions, isn't this like unbelievable square for white to put something? Like, you're just screaming this square. I mean, if I can get one day night here, it would be really, 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 really ugly for black. OK, so maybe starting with rookie one. And then this is a big, big idea. Because sometimes, even, even as a pawn sacrifice, we will get this square for the knight and open the diagonal for the bishop, assuming like he capture and we capture. No, really, really, really. This is what I say. You close your eyes and say, this is the square I won and fight for. And if black play h6, my feeling instinct, I want to go knight h4. Just because you weakened the light squares. Like, seriously weakened the light squares. You know, we are playing based on where the targets are. And targets can change. e6, g6. Depends on the moves. So black played a6. And white played a very smart, I think, positional idea. I mean, I don't like at all how black is looking in this position. a5 is a normal idea. But I assume that something like this would have happened. And yeah, black gets his normal counterplay on the b file. Why play this move? What is the idea of this move? What is white going to play after b5? Yeah. Immediately before, or maybe take, taken before. But maybe you're right. Maybe immediately before. Immediately before I can take on before, you will take with the rook. Maybe I can play a5. Before. OK, so basically, we have this discussion. If after b5, it's clear that we want to get this. OK. This, this, this is very, very nice for white. Very good for white. Because after c4, you can come and say, oh, black has a pass pawn. This is horrible for black. Horrible. Because white got this square. 
this perfectly blockaded. This knight is a dream here. And if you one day get rid of those, the game is automatically, like, really over. But it's kind of a horrible position here. Just because look how well they are blocked and how amazing white knight is going to be on d4. Black cannot play that. And if he doesn't take, well, he's going to have such huge weaknesses and white pawns in the center. So here black is in trouble. I think this is the idea. Now, Julian was suggesting b4 maybe earlier, and I thought that here, maybe black can play this move order. Attack the rook. This might be a tiny bit different story. Might be right. I mean, I got pass pawn and... Yes, this is different. Knight d4, bishop there, or maybe even tank. I mean, maybe, I, maybe still white is... Uh, all right, maybe all right plus, but I think Black got some play here that I'm not certain I should want to give him. Actually, I would be thinking here to take with the knight, but I just go before. I mean, because if you take, take, you'll just be stuck with these, these weak pawns. You, Julian said long ago, about 20 minutes, well, Black is, wants to get counterplay on the queen side. That's not counterplay. That's just black being stuck with a weak pawn here and weak one here. So this is why rook b1 is important. For example, f5 now is an interesting move. What's the difference now? Yes, what is the difference? Actually, computers say it's the best move. No, OK, I can, I can understand that there is a difference here. He should have played it, by the way. The move that Black played, not really pretty. So what's the difference? That if take, bishop take, The rook is under attack. So now we should go. So now take is tiny bit less attractive, right? Because bishop take and b1 is under attack. Bishop g5 now is the possibility in white is better. a5 was played. And you know, like, wow. This? Yes. What, uh, what is our problem with a5? Yeah. Huh? Everything there, dude. Like, everything. Like, basically, we said white's dream square for the knight is here. Black wants to push pawns and get counterplay. And push the pawns, not leave thousands of weaknesses and holes over there. No, so if, if black gives up on the idea of playing b5, strategically it is very bad. Strategically, it's just really bad for black. Like, super duper seriously, this is not OK. I mean, I, I don't like this movie. Black had to play f5. White played rook e1. Knight a6, OK, beautiful square for the knight. And the bishop, just to, just if black has any dreams. No, all, all those squares were given for white. Knight before. I, I wonder if white can move the bishop and get something like this in the position. OK, knight a3 was played. I think maybe white played also tiny, not as aggressive as possible, but OK. So some moves just moving, moving the pieces a bit left, a bit right were played. Yeah, I, I thought white should have, again, made more effort to get this one there. Knight c4, bishop e8. But white kept advantage all the time. Now the question, can white take on e5 or can he not take on e5? Well, what would black play if white takes on e5? Knight take a5? What do you want me to take? d6? No, if I said e5. 
I said E5? I thought it sounded like an A. Yeah, exactly. And take and kind of tiny bit help in black. Or by T. Rook A1. Just so this pawn is defended. No B5, because B5 leave the beautiful A5 pawn under attack in many versions. So B6 was played. Okay, so black, where is black play on that side of the board? Not there. H4. I think this is a very good move for white. Look, when we play different openings, we have to understand where we want to play, where the opponent want to play, and so on. For example, in King's Indian is the simplest opening in the world to understand, right? Well, what is basically the story of the King's Indian? One line, black wants to go for checkmate here, white positionally winning on the queen side, right? Exactly, exactly. Black is pushing everything here. Now, in many, in the Benoni and many other openings, it's not that far away. It's not about checkmate, but it's black is want to use this diagonal and expanding on the queen side and white, the, usually the center and well, mostly the center. You can tiny bit make it larger part of the center. But since black has no play on the queen side, and white cannot break on the queen side. And okay, not easy for white right now to also see e5. But white can create some weaknesses here. Maybe at some point, maybe get the bishop here, maybe h5 at some point. I mean, why just gaining right now more space on the king side? Yeah, black here just played a very bad move. Like, I mean, actually, unbelievably bad move. So which move would be aggressive, logical, and super bad at the same time? That's what you need to find. Aggressive, logical, and very bad. Which one? What, what did you say, Jonathan? I'm, I'm saying Julian must know that. That's every movie he ever plays. I, I, I didn't want to say that, but it, it was all my time to say. <laughs> we are not saying anything. Yes, Julian? Don't want to look for... B no, but okay, but what, 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 what kind of black want to play here, or might want to play, or thinking of playing, or not thinking of playing? Now everyone is afraid to say, because if you are right about it, well, it's not clear what it means. <laughs> like, you see, I'm wrong. All my moves are brilliant. I don't play bad moves. Okay, black played the move that, yes? I'm going to go with just h5 and stop. h5 is much better than what was played in the game. <laughs> much better, that's a great move. <laughs> but, what, what? h5 is better than possible. No, h5 is maybe not, I mean the problem, actually h5 is probably not a great move because b sharp and at some point I'll play g4 and attack here. You know white is, will have lots of pieces, but no, but h5 is much better. No, the move, the move actually for black to play here is h6. Oh, you just want to control the g5 score in some version. No, but white played the move really, I'm trying to understand what white overlooked. 
You know, sometimes one player plays a move that loses the game on the spot, like blunder the rook, minus five, but you see sequence of moves, and then you say, you know, he missed on the fourth move, an obvious move, but still you understand what he missed. Okay, strong players, blunders, everyone, right? But when the opponent has 10 moves that each one of them is winning on the spot, like, dude, what? Like, seriously, what? Like, black played f5. Now tell me, e5, bishop g5, knight g5, I mean, like, which move for white is not winning here? <laughs> like, I mean, no, seriously, like, he's a really strong grandmaster, not saying a word, you know, probably if we play tomorrow a match, he's going to kick my whatever extra for my comments. But what is that? No, like seriously, this is like, now, now, the now the question should be find a move that is not winning on the spot for white. No, like this is horrible. Like joking, no joking. I mean, this move is like, I mean, okay, this is, this is just killer idea. I mean, doesn't matter where you go. I mean, that's it. It's like, I mean, it's equal material and black is going to collapse here. Collapse. I mean, like not, not like slightly worse, not like much worse, not like lost. Like, you know, packing the stuff and going to the next game. It's like, I mean, just collapsing everything. Like this, you name it. Like everything. Like what, maybe, maybe, maybe this version, this is maybe just, just a piece down and probably best version that we've seen for black in the entire line. <laughs> no, really, really ugly. Like, you know, all right. But I don't played knight g5. All right, it's not a bad move, but, but okay, black, black was already worse, like before a5. But yeah, knight g5 is actually not a good move. Not that great move. I mean, I if we are speaking in computer terms, I mean, bishop g5 or e5, more than plus two for white, plus two, plus two and a half, which means basically white is like almost a piece up. Like big, big plus, like serious stuff. Like knight g5 gives white ah, less than one point advantage. Because black actually didn't allow any more these e5 ideas. It took. It kind of, well, it actually only moved to, to, to not be lost. Because any other move is just lost. So he sacrificed the exchange. And actually, amazingly enough, kind of got, got a lot of counterplay. I mean, interesting, white activity should count more right now than taking the rook. Because w when white took the rook, which happened in the game, black took back, and now this is falling. So black suddenly has, he's down material a tiny bit, right? He's down a rook for a knight and a pawn. He's down in exchange, but suddenly we can see at least vision, you know, dreams about black. If he one day gets to move the bishop, push d5, well, he gets thousand, you know, endless amount more than what he had just a few moves ago. Like, really, really nothing to compare. Okay, rookie one was played. No, this, this is playing the game all over again. Bishop g5 would have totally won the game. Yeah, queen f6 was probably the best move. I mean, black has, can you see that black pieces are quite in the game? Knight e6 was played, all right. And here's some crazy complications or sequences started, but woman grandmaster Anna Shorevich was playing very, very well here. Like she played an excellent move here. Actually, she, she pretty much, well, not the best move, but, well, the best move, not the only move, but very best move. Anyone can maybe suggest it? You will get credit for that. In, in Julian's situation, no bothering him until the end of the lecture today. Huh? You really need that. That's true, actually. No, she plays very good here. Because one more move and the advantage almost disappears if white is not playing accurate. Think about where black is weak and how to attack them.
Yes. Which squares seems weak for black here? Choose a color. Light squares, right? That's the thing. So this way, this is a great, great move. I, I like this move very much. Because after take, take, very good. The light squares are really, no? Really, really very good. Queen f6. I mean, black, I, I wonder if black can make effort to get a bishop there. That's what I would go. I, I wouldn't play queen f6. I like this. I mean, okay, I don't like the position at all, but at least something like that, maybe queen f6. Like, ju just, just get the bishop somewhere in play. I mean, after queen f6, not, not easy for black to, to get play with the, the dark color bishop. Take on d5 was played. Fighting with him. And rook e2. Just kind of defending everything. Okay, bishop g7. And here, I, li I love those moves when white is playing them. Really love them. Come on. Cool move for white. It's happening in some, I remember some superstar, Anand game has these ideas. Really, really pretty move. Actually, a move that pretty much wins the game. Yeah, black queen f6 was not okay. No. Here, to show you that I'm serious, I'm taking my bag and pulling a Jennifer maneuver. Taking the chair, going to sit down. Not standing up until someone suggests the right move here. If I fall asleep, you wake me up. Very good. Who said it? My goodness. Ah, oh, could use in five more minutes there. Okay. <laughs> we'll speak about it after. But excellent move. It's so beautiful to see how we can get, you know, not here, not just, just so beautiful. I, I mean, to me, it's like, it's beautiful coordination of the pieces, just finding the right squares to get everything to ideal squares. So strong, winning the game. I mean, this move, yeah, black should have played queen f5 a bit earlier. Okay, they repeated moves a bit, maybe time table, right? We can see the time. Bishop e4. Yeah, here, I mean, in this position, like the bishop on, on the bishop here is really pretty. This is a very strong move. Why? Just get our rook away to come to the f file, and why, why do we put rook on open files? So they can go to the seventh rank. I mean, this is where ultimately we will be very happy when we get our rook. So the way to f7 passes to f3. The, this was pretty much winning. But okay, I mean, I'm certain Anna would have found it with enough time. But move 36, just by, just by the fact that they are repeating moves. I can assume that there was some time trouble. Yeah, here black got tiny bit in the game again, d5. So he managed to push this weak pawn. But okay, not really much, much. Rook to the open file. And apparently in the same school, we go from open file to the seventh rank. And if one rook is good on the seventh rank, <laughs> exactly, you get the idea, right? Okay, so practically the game is over right now. I mean, white rooks managed to break through and black somewhat in, well, desperate, not desperate. Well, he took. Of course, the idea if white take, black queen is going to take and check. And, but white shouldn't have any, any business to do with 
to do with something like that. I mean, why to take, queen take check, f2? No, I mean, this It actually would be just a big, big mistake. I mean, queen e2 would have won the game here quite quickly. Queen e2 and then just take on b6. No, okay, queen g4 also seems reasonable. Rook e take, d4. Okay, I mean, the, d, d4 is just, I mean, okay, the game is really over. How to play here? Play two good moves here, and we'll call it an evening. Yes, Julian? Rook d7. So you want to play rook here. I'm going to take your rook, and then you're going to come back. <laughs> or, it, or you thought that you're going to play rook here. I will move my queen somewhere, and then you will double on the seventh rank. Yep. I'm going to kill. You know, I told you, I got you one freebie. You got it this one. <laughs> but, but believe me, oh wow. I, next time, you're not going to get them so cheap. Because <laughs> this I could have used for years. OK. No rook d7. Yes. What do we want? Very, very good move. No, why, why, why? Just going to induce some weaknesses in black's position and win. Yes, Julian. Queen you want to exchange queens now? I mean, it's not, let's put it this way. It's much better than blundering. <laughs> you're, po <laughs> you're probably uh, still in a decent, no, but you know, it's not so clear, Julian. Take, take this. No, 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 no. This not so cool. I mean, you, you can get in trouble here. Because e even if you give check here, you don't have bishop d5 check. And I want to play b You don't have checkmate because the bishop controls d7. And I'm going to play bishop here, pretty square. And this, I probably white still winning, but uh. no, no, no. But. Come on, exchanging queen here is wrong. Here you want to exchange queens here? Queen h3. Queen h3. I mean, black is cut on the seventh rank. His king is about to get checkmated. And Mr. Julian <laughs> wants to exchange queens to go to an endgame. And you're right, the endgame is maybe better, but ugh. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's see, queen d7. Congratulations. You're plus still winning, but drop like five points in the evaluation. <laughs> OK, so now we are threatening checkmate. And checkmate is quite a serious business. Checkmate is a serious business. Bishop, take, Bishop g7, this is not really bad for white. Like everything open. This position, you exchange queens when every piece that you have is attacking. <laughs> Bishop e7 or h5, say white will play the same. h5 was played, and now one, one more good move here, you know, m my hope. You know, <laughs> one more good move for white. I mean, the game is over already anyway, completely. I mean, this has been weakened, this has been weakened, this, this. I mean, there are so many ways to win here, but come on. Throw the best move. White played computer best move here. I was actually thinking about the second move. But, well, apparently Anna plays much better. But either way, it's not much to see. This is my move. Bishop e4. But computers say only second move. But I agree, yes. Bishop e4 is very logical because all the pieces are participating in the game. The rook, the rook, the queen. I just want to bring one more piece and attack g6 and finish the game. I mean, yeah. Th this is my move. Here, here, here. Ta and if take, we take, take, and then take the pawn on g6. And but this is even stronger. Because rook f7 is out there. OK, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Oh, and rook b8 is, a, is an idea. I mean, ev everywhere. Actually, rook b8 is a better move. Knight d3 was played. And OK, just a piece up and white won the game quite quickly. So you know, it wasn't a white 
some gambit like Jonathan's game. But it was a game that White was not afraid for complications. Actually, didn't play perfect. White had better ways to play. Black played some A5, was strategically was really wrong, and F5 was just, okay, I, I really don't know what Black overlooked. Maybe he thought he's uh, anyway lost and just this is desperate attempt, but he should have played A6. But you know the complications? White was not afraid of playing that way. Played like sh she should. You know, I want to say he should, but... And this is probably what we should take from both games. One, when we are playing against stronger players, saying, oh, it's complicated, I'm scared. But where is better when it's, you need to speak to discuss your opponent endless uh, experience, knowledge, experience and knowledge? No, this is one thing. And in complications, it's very easy for the best players in the world to go wrong. I mean, okay, they're the best player in the world because they go wrong a bit less than others, but it's still very easy. We just see Nanand, you know, blunder in one move, game nine, the match, the game, but it's kind of simple. So, you know, in general, I don't believe that anyone should change his game plan, normal game plan. Definitely not avoid complications against stronger players. Just practice better and calculate a bit. Mm -hmm.